Welcome everyone, we're going to do another training session. Uh, this time we're looking how to put a flow chart into Word. Pretty much everyone's got a copy of uh, Microsoft Word or something similar. And this one we're using Word 2013. So the first thing we're going to do is just going to go up and click on the View tab here at the top, the ribbon. And then we're going to go over and click on Grid Lines here. What that does is it makes grid lines appear on the page. It just makes it a little easier to line things up. Now, this isn't an exact science. There's a lot of fiddling around with this, but uh, we'll see how we go. The next thing we're going to do is going to click on the Insert tab at the top. Now, your ribbon might look a little different because the layout changes depending on the size of your screen. And my screen just happens to be particularly small. So we're going to go onto the Shapes drop-down menu. And notice if you look down near the bottom, there's a section called Flowchart. Now these shapes adhere to flowchart methodology, so each shape will have a meaning. So what we're going to do is start off with this one here, fourth in from the right, it's called the Terminator. Which is an interesting name for a shape because it's not only used to terminate or end a process, but it's also used to start a process. So what I want you to do is I want you to click on that shape. Now notice that I can click and drag to create the shape, or uh, I can just click once. I'm going to go up to the top and give it one quick click and hopefully it will just go straight in there, there we go. And so we can see that shape in there. Now if I want to move my shape about, I can go to the border of the shape and then I can click and I can drag it about a bit and it should line up with the grid lines as well. So if I can yeah, just quickly line around, you can see, there we go. So I'm just line it up in the center. Brilliant. Now, if this is going to start my process and say the process is going to be getting up in the morning, the first thing that's going to happen is my alarm's going to go off. So I'm just going to type in the text alarm. Uh, okay, and press escape to come out of it, or I can click away if I want to. Now, one of the things to note, uh, if I can zoom in a bit and hope this is going to work, that's it. So notice that this text, you don't see all of it there. Yeah, it's a bit missing. It looks like the, the, the bottom half of the letters are chopped off. So what I'm just going to do is click on the shape itself here. I'm just going to go to the corner of the Terminator and then make that shape bigger by holding down the shift key and then dragging a little bit just to make that shape a little bigger. And then the shape's nice and centered as well. Brilliant. Let me just zoom back again. Hopefully that will allow me to zoom back. That's good. And again, go to the border and I can move this around. So the next thing I'm going to do is have a process. So if you notice at the drawing tools bit at the top of the ribbon, there's a tab called Format. Now pretty much everything that you need to create your flowchart will be in that Format tab. So click on Format. I'm going to go all the way over to the left-hand side here and see Shapes and click on that drop-down menu here. And this time we're going to go to Lines. So these are all different types of connector lines that we can use. Uh, actually, before we do that, we're going to go down to the flow chart. Actually, we're going to create another process. Do apologize. So I'm going to click on process here. I'm going to go underneath here, uh, just about here. Give it a click once. Here's our process. And of course, we have to wake up. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to wake up here. That's fine. Just click away to finish up there. That's good. So now we need to connect the shapes. And this time, uh, we can go back to lines. Now, if you can't see the format tab at the top, that means you haven't clicked on a shape. So if we click back on a shape here, notice the format tab appears. Click off, it disappears. Click on, it appears again. So we're going to go up back up to shapes. And now this time we're going to go to lines. And we can see we've got our arrow there. We're going to select our arrow. Just start off at the bottom here underneath this terminator. We're going to click and hold the mouse button down. But we're also going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard as we draw a connector from one point to the other. When we get to the end, we'll let go of the line and we've got one line there. Sometimes it's hard to see because of the grid. It should snap to the grid. If I zoom in, you should be able to see that. Let's try that again. There we go. So we can see that going on there. Brilliant. OK, so next shape we're going to draw is going to be a decision. We have a decision to make. So what's the decision? It's whether we get up or not. So if we go back, make sure we don't click anywhere else, but if we go back up to shapes here, we can go down into our flow chart and notice the diamond decision uh, shape. This is anytime we need to make a decision, this is the shape we're going to use. So click on that shape, find a location just underneath the other one there. That's good. Give it a click. And what we could do here 
is we're going to decide whether we're going to get up or not. So I'm going to type get up, type a question mark in there. Now, I have typed the word up and the question mark, but you can't see it because the decision shape isn't big enough. So what we're going to do is going to go to the corners here. We're going to hold down the shift key, but also the control key at the same time as we drag the box to make it bigger. And notice it not only makes the decision shape bigger, but it also enlarges it from the center point, therefore making it easier to line things up. So the next thing we just need to do is go back and choose a connector. So I'm going to choose one of these lines here, and then I'm going to connect wake up here down to get up, or whether I'm not going to get up or not. Excellent. So next thing we're going to do is we want to line all these shapes up in the middle. So what we'll do is we'll click on the first shape, the alarm shape, then we'll hold down the shift key, click on the line, Keep that shift key held down while we click on wake up, the next line, and then get up. So if you look up to the sort of top right hand corner of your ribbon, you should see an align objects button. When I hover over it, you can see it there. So if you click on the drop down list for that, and we're going to choose align center. So give that a click, and it will make sure that all the shapes are lined up. If you want to make sure they're evenly distributed as well, there's an option there as well for distribute vertically. So you can use that and make sure the shapes are all distributed evenly. So nearly done with our basic flow chart. Of course, you can spend a lot more time on your flow chart for a lot more detail, whether you get up or whether you feel ill or whether you want certain breakfast in the morning or whatever. So let's just create another couple of lines here. Now, again, I've clicked off of my shape, so my format tab has disappeared. If that's the case, I can still go back to insert and go to shapes and then choose my line. So I'm going to choose a line here. I'm going to go over to this side here. I'm just going to draw a line out. That's cool. Uh, now, if I need to move it up a little bit, I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard. I can move things down if it's not just lined up exactly. I think I'll keep that lined up as best as I can here. Now, let's oops, just undo that. There we go. Okay, and I'll do an another one for the other side. So, it's going to go to shapes, choose a line, and draw one for the other side as well. So, holding down my shift key. Going to draw around the other side. There we go. I might have to move the decision shape down a little bit. Let me just move that across just one more. So holding down the shift key. Oops. Just, there you go. Make sure you hold the shift key down as you're dragging this out. Now, obviously, one part of the decision is going to be yes, the other part's going to be no. So, what we're going to use for that is the text box. It's up in the top left hand corner. It says draw horizontal text box. You might see it up there. So, I'm going to give that a click. OK, I'm going to go down to the bottom here and click to drag to create my text box. And I'm going to type in there the word no and click away so you can see that. Now, what we need to do is just get rid of that border around the outside of the box and the fill of that shape there. So let me just drag it up, up a little bit, give it some more room. And then just look at the format tab at the top. And over it, sort of leftish side, you've got the fill drop down menu. And I'm going to choose no fill for that. And I'm also going to do the same for the outline. And there I can see my box is no. Now I want to do exactly the same for the yes. But instead of having to recreate the box, what I'm going to do here is just hover over the line. This is near the border of the box. Make sure I'm not in the middle, because otherwise I'll be copying the text. I want to move to the edge, to the border of the box. What I then do is I hold down the control key on the keyboard, hold down my mouse button, and then drag the lower no across so it lines up across the other line. Double click in the middle and then type in yes. And now I have my yes there. So notice I'm not putting the decisions on the boxes themselves. I'm putting the decisions on the lines, basically. So last but not least, I need to know if I get up. Uh, if yes, I go to work. No, I go to bed. So what I'm going to do for the alarm here, I'm just going to copy this terminator here so I don't have to recreate the whole thing. So if you remember how I copied, I hold down the control key and then I can drag a copy off. And then that's that one there. That's good. And I'm going to type in the text. If I'm no, I'm going to go to bed or just sleep. There we go. And I'm going to do another one for the other side, holding down the control key, drag one the other side. That's good. And then this one is going to be work. There we go. Brilliant. So it's almost done. Only a couple of other things to do. Maybe just aligning these things up a little bit. So I bring that down a bit. So it just 
lines the lines up just a touch there and just it's probably worthwhile just dragging this a little bit sort of a bit more to the right so it's just tucked underneath that box there of course you've got many other options available as well if you click for instance at the top and on the format tab you've got options for styles so you can change the colors uh, of each boxes uh, what i suggest before you do that is make sure you hold down the shift key and select more than one box so i can select them all and then under the format tab with the styles you can just hover over you can see the variety of styles that you have here there we go i'm going to stick with the green one click away and that's ready to go of course if you want to turn your grid off view and grid lines so there we go thanks very much for listening more videos can be found on www.computertutoring.co.uk